All right, today we'll go over the leak code question, reverse linked list. It says reverse a singly linked list. So the input is one, two, three, four, five, null. And the reversed form of that is five, four, three, two, one, null. Then it says a linked list can be reversed either iteratively or recursively. Can you implement them both? Well, in this video, we'll only implement the iterative version. So let's show you that now. All right, so when I was originally picturing what a linked list looks like when it's reversed, this is what I pictured. The original linked list is one, two, null, and when you reverse it, it's two, one, null. But I had no idea how to make the one become the two, and the two become the one, and the null stay where it is. So how I picture it now is like this. The original linked list is still one, two, null. When you reverse it, you now have a tail to the left of the linked list. You make the two point to that, and then you make the one point to the two instead of vice versa. All right, one important thing to note as we move on is how exactly each node references the next node. So right now, one is referencing two, but how is that actually done? If we look up here, this represents the same linked list that we see below. So the value is one, and the next node is the thing that it's linked to. So the next node from one has a value of two. The next node from two has a value of null. The key to this question is changing the value of the next node. So for instance, instead of one pointing to two, we can change its reference by changing its next value to something else, let's say five. That would look something like value one, next node now has a value of five. All right, so how do we actually go about reversing the linked list? The key is to keep track of three nodes at once. The previous node, the next node, and the head node. So let's look at the linked list. What's the head node? It's the number one. What is next from the number one? It's the number two. But now we have a problem. What's the previous node from head? It doesn't exist yet. And that's why we create a new null node in the front. That'll be previous. Let's get rid of that to avoid confusion. Okay, so what's the next step? The next step is to change the reference of head from next, which is what usually happens in a linked list, to whatever is previous. So we do that by changing head's next reference to previous. Okay. Now to set us up for the next loop, we actually have to change the previous reference to whatever the head is and the head reference to whatever's next. Then we can start the next loop. So first step in that is to change next to whatever head.next is. Then as before, we have to change the head's next reference to no longer be pointing to whatever next is. We point it to previous. So two will no longer point to null two will point to what's previous to two, which is one. All right, and as we said before, we have to change the previous reference to whatever head is. We have to change the head reference to whatever is next, and now starts the next loop. So final loop is when we know that we're done. How do we know that? Because the condition to stop reversing linked list is when head is null. And as we see here, head is null. And to verify that, let's just look at what we have. Look right over here. We have a completely reversed linked list. And the way linked lists work is that if nothing is pointing to a node, then that node doesn't exist anymore. So nothing's pointing to null, so we'll just get rid of it. All right, so let's get to the code. Like I said before, the key to this question is to keep track of the previous head and next nodes. And then instead of head.next referencing the next node, 
we'll reassign it to point to the previous node. So let's get started. Remember that the first thing you need to do is you need to create a new node to the left of head. So let previous node equal null. And now we'll do a loop. So while head doesn't equal null, we need to get a reference to the next node. So let next node equal head.next. And now here is the part that matters the most. Instead of head.next pointing to next, it'll point to previous. So head.next equals the node in front of it instead of the next one. So previous node. And then we just reassign previous node and head in order to set up the next loop. So prev node equals head and then head equals next node. Final step is to return the linked list. Um, and since head right now is null, we can't actually return head. We need to return the node to the left of that, which is the previous node. So return prev node. Okay, let's try it out. Okay, looks good there. All right, so it's faster than about 81% of JavaScript online submissions. All right, and as usual, the code is linked down below. See you next time.